November 1938. As Peter watched from his bedroom window and saw the destruction of his neighborhood, he understood Goebbels' radio threat had successfully been carried out. Peter knew there was more than glass broken that night. The massive attack on Jews had changed everything. But despite the devastation and mayhem, the morning still came. He thought of the song he liked to play, You Are Not Alone. He sang the words to himself in a hushed voice, remembering the way his mother used to sing it. The night is dark until the sunrise. Your heart is lonely until I answer your cries. Your path is steep and filled with stone. But I will walk beside you. You are not alone. He wished his father were there. He would have known what to do, but he had been snatched away by the Nazis. The rest of his family was left to clean up the wreckage of their lives. Peter carefully wrapped his ball and Jack's, his yo-yo, and his father's sharpest butcher shop meat cleaver in a cloth and put them in a dented tin box. He closed the bent lid and buried it under the shop's back steps like a ceremonial funeral for his old life. He returned to the front of the shop where Sylvia was cleaning up the vandalism. Becca sat on the bottom step of the stairs playing with her doll. Suitcases and bundles rested next to her, surrounding a sleeping baby Lily to keep her out of the wreckage. They did this to all of us, didn't they? Peter said to his mother. Sylvia nodded sadly. Becca picked up her doll and held it close to her worried face. Gina, I told you to be quiet in the wardrobe. You must not say a word, or they will take away your sweet papa, she whispered to her doll. Peter grabbed the other broom and began helping his mother. I don't understand why we're cleaning it up, he said. It's their mess now. Hitler demands it, Sylvia said. Anyway, your father always kept a tidy shop. From around the corner, Bruno appeared, wagging his bushy tail. The tan and black dog ambled over to Peter. Bruno? he asked. Look, Mutti, it's Bruno. Sylvia sighed. Hurry up and take him back to Herr Frank's apartment, but don't go in. It's too dangerous, and we've got to finish up, she said. Herr Frank has changed. He is no longer our friend. Herr Frank is a Nazi, Becca said, her eyes wide. He took Papa. It's not Bruno's fault, Peter said. He slapped his hip. Come on, boy. Let's get you home. Bruno trotted beside Peter as they walked the short way to Herr Frank's apartment. It was a trip Peter had taken many times to deliver meat packages, but this time he had to dodge the destruction of the Nazi stormtroopers, the SA paramilitary forces, policemen who stood by and watched and sometimes participated, and other vandals. Peter hesitated outside the apartment building. Go on, Bruno. You're home. Bruno wouldn't budge. He pushed his nose into Peter's leg, and Peter sighed. Okay, okay, I'll walk you up. Bruno followed Peter up the stairs to Herr Frank's apartment. They stopped outside the door, which was open. Peter looked at Bruno. You weren't lost, were you? You came to get me. Bruno nudged Peter through the apartment door. Peter stepped around the corner to see what was wrong. Herr Frank. Peter called, his voice shaking. He was in direct defiance of his mother and terrified of his friend turned Nazi. His foot slipped. Peter stared, his gray eyes filled with fear and confusion. Herr Frank was splayed out on the floor. Bruno growled and backed away. It took Peter a second to comprehend the disturbing scene. He had slipped on the slimy remains of blood, flesh, and brains on the floor. When he finally realized that he was seeing Herr Frank's exploded head, he turned and vomited. Bruno barked. Peter looked around in a panic. Come on, Bruno. You can't stay here. Bruno barked again. Peter grabbed Bruno's collar and pulled him out the door. He didn't stop running until he reached the butcher shop. Muti! he cried as soon as he spotted his mother. Sylvia stopped sweeping when she saw the horrified look on Peter's pale face. She put the broom down and straightened up. What is it? Peter, what happened? Why is Bruno still with you? I told you to take him back to Herr Frank's apartment.